All right, welcome back. So we talked about what APIs are, what, what the term stands for. We talked to some examples. Um, next, we're going to talk about how they work and, and not just you know how they're structured, but what they send back and what the data looks like. Um, so what this giant mess was here and, and why is that better than HTML? Before we do that, I have this little graphic here of you know a human interface to iTunes that you can see. Um, you know, the iTunes browser. But then here is what you get from the iTunes API. So this is, you know, much cleaner, much more simplified. And this is, you know, a nice cleaned up version that's color coded, uh, but it actually really looks like this. But it's pure data that we get. So it's still, you know, album names and uh, URLs for images and dates and ratings and prices. But rather than this format, and as you can see here, I'm actually searching for Beyonce, and then these are the results you see here. What I'm doing is writing an API call that will do the same thing, search for Beyonce music videos. So this is how the API is structured. You, This is changes from every API. You have to read the documentation, which is what I did here. But if you make a request to this URL, which I'll do right now, and we look at what is the response, it's gonna be hard to read because it's just a chunk of text, but this is the underlying information about, looks like 50 Beyonce music videos. And so I could use this if I wanted to build a Beyonce music video viewer application or Beyonce music video shuffle uh, app that would just pick one and play it randomly. Okay, so Again, the key here is that this, what you're seeing here is a representation of, you know, a computer interface, a code interface. So here are some other um, endpoints, which is the term for these URLs of the iTunes API or one of the iTunes APIs, the search APIs. So you can search for Beatles songs, and this is what you would do. Entity song term equals Beatles. You can search for podcasts about code. Harry Potter movies. And this is just to show you that you know this is how the iTunes API is set up. It's not a pattern that you would follow for other APIs. Again, you just figure it out using the or using the documentation for the particular API you're interested in. Okay, so what is this stuff that we see here? There are two main formats that APIs, web APIs respond with nowadays. Um, we're used to HTML. That's what everything we've done so far responds with. The uh, you know the app, this website I'm looking at now here is written in HTML. My browser takes it, displays it for me nicely. But there's a lot of extra stuff in there as we talked about. We don't need, we don't want when we're asking for data from an API. We don't want that structure of the page, the the color, the con we just want the content that underlies it all. So these two formats that are most commonly used are called XML and JSON. So XML, we'll start with that, stands for Extended Markup Language or Extensible Markup Language. Um, it's very similar to HTML in this, the syntax. As you can see here, we have these angle brackets, um, opening and closing tags, with that slash. Where it's different, though, is that it doesn't describe presentation or structure of, uh, of the presentation. Like We're not saying that you know this is bold and this is a list item. All that it does is encode key value pair so data as you can see here this is a person tag and inside of a person there's an age that's 21 a name which is Travis and city which is Los Angeles so key value pairs you can nest things inside of each other um, and there's no real rules on what what you can put here so it's not like HTML when there's particular tags you put whatever tags you want and this is one way of encoding data and then our code would get this back and it would be able to understand, okay, this is a person and has an age, a name, and a city. And city is Los Angeles. JSON is another way of storing data and sending that data back without any of the pretty HTML or ugly, depending on who you are, but none of that extra stuff. And it stands for JavaScript Object Notation. And if you're familiar with JavaScript objects, which you should be, this will look very familiar. So this is the exact same data as we had here. 
a person whose age is 21, name is Travis, and city is LA, using JSON. So we have an object where we have person, which is another object, where we have age, which is 21, name is Travis, city is Los Angeles. So it's just another way of storing data. Either one works, there are other options as well. Um, XML used to be used a lot more than JSON. JSON though has quickly become much more popular. And the main reason for that is that a lot of times we're making API calls, we're using JavaScript. So when we get this data back and it looks like this, and we're in JavaScript. So I have a JavaScript application and I'm asking for weather data and it comes back as JSON. Well, then I can very quickly use it in my JavaScript. I don't have to you know, convert it from this format into a JavaScript object. I convert it from this, which is basically JavaScript, uh, and it's very quickly, or it's very quick. One thing though to note, uh, you do need quotes around the keys. So it's not exactly JavaScript. You do need quotes around the keys. Um, but it's very, very similar. And again, I have a comparison here if you want to just you know, look at them side by side. Same data represented differently. So Yahoo has a weather API that we're not going to use right now, but I'm showing it to you, the documentation for it at least, uh, because it allows you to toggle between JSON and XML. So what we have here are a few example requests requests. So if I wanted to figure out how do I ask for the sunset time in Hawaii, it will show you first down here, this is where you need to make a request to. So this long URL, it looks kind of crazy, but this is where you would need to request. And you need to write, let's see, select astronomy.sunset from weather forecast. So this giant thing, you don't need to worry about it too much. But there's this one part, format equals JSON. And when you make this request, which we can do in our browser, this is what you get back in JSON. So it looks like sunset in Hawaii is at 6.55 PM. So I can do that. I can also just request that. And I get that response right here. So it's just a regular request. But I can also switch to XML. And you'll see the exact same information it just looks a little different in how it's formatted, but the same information is here. Sunset is 6.55 p.m. It's a little clunkier to use XML. Some of the older APIs only support XML, but most new things support JSON. Um, it's pretty rare nowadays to find a new thing, a new API that only supports XML. So we're gonna focus on JSON, but I wanna hammer the point home that they are just both formats given this situation where we have, let's say, you know, Yahoo Weather has data and it wants to get it to us. Well, it's not gonna send it as HTML, but there needs to be a predictable format for it to send it in so that we can kind of decode it and unwrap it and you know, get meaning from it. XML is one option, but JSON is a much easier option. It's shorter usually, a lot less text where we don't have to write these closing tags, but it also just works really nicely with um, JavaScript, which is what we're doing most of the time. So with all of that said, if we go back here, this is JSON. This is just to refresh your memory. This is the underlying API, the JSON API for Reddit, in particular for r slash ah, adorable photos. This is the underlying JSON. And it's kind of a mess to look at. There is a Chrome plugin or a Chrome uh, extension I like to use called JSON view or JSON viewer, yeah, JSON view. It's a Chrome extension. It makes JSON look like this where you can kind of explore it easier. So I'm gonna install it here. And then when I go back and I make that same request, it takes a moment. As you can see, I see the original and then the nice formatted version from the extension. And it's a lot easier to see the information. And there's still a lot here, but I can see the structure now, how things are related. You can see that it's JSON. So we have the, the curly braces. Let's see if I can make this a bit bigger. We have the key value pairs. We have you know array brackets, uh, strings, numbers, all this stuff in here. And what's nice is that I can close things down, expand them, and explore the data, rather than that giant mess that you can see here. Uh, it's the same code, it's just formatted nicely. 
So I highly recommend installing something like that. They make them for Firefox and uh, pretty much every other browser out there. Uh, I highly recommend it. You can also just look for JSON Viewer online. If you don't want to ex uh, install an extension, you can go to a site like this and paste in your JSON and then click on Format and it will format it for you. So I could select all of this, go here, Format, and it does that as well. But it's not as interactive. I can't collapse it and expand it. So to wrap up, JSON is one of the formats, XML and JSON, two most common for APIs, for web APIs to respond with rather than HTML and all that clunkiness. So what we'll be doing is writing applications that will make a request for this information and we'll get it back as JSON. We won't be using this Reddit information, but another JSON API. We'll get that information back in our app. We'll be able to use it very quickly and then do something with it, save it to our database, do some analysis on it, and then show something to our user eventually as HTML. So you'll see how to do that uh, in the next video.